the household of faith would like to invite you to worship with us. Worship services are held at the Indiana University Northwest Library Conference Center, room LC110. For more information, please visit www.israelteach.com. Now understand the position of God. 
This Emmanuel, this one that was met, God manifest in the flesh. He was God, came off the Father's throne, came as a flesh and blood man and died for the sins of the world. Died for people who initially were enemies to him. Lower creatures, lower beings. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's what the father gave. He gave his son, had him sacrificed, and that's the only son he had at the time. So that we might have a chance at life. Keep reading. For God said this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. We were worthy of condemnation. We were worthy of death. The wage of sin is death, and all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But this God, the Father, didn't send his son to condemn the world. He said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But what did he send him to do? But that the world through him might be saved. This is love. Undeserved. Because the grace that we get, the mercy that we get, that's, before that there was love. There was love because you have to love in order to give unmerited favor. You have to love in order to give mercy. This is a type of love. It was so, it was unwarranted. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Keep reading. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So you must look up to that woman, that son of man. Go ahead. But he that Believe it not is condemned already. And believe in him, but if you don't, you are condemned already. See, there must be reciprocity. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And you are worthy of condemnation after you step on this love that he has shown for you. You are worthy to be damned. Keep reading. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You didn't believe in him, you didn't show love back. So you are worthy of death. Let's go to uh, John, the 15th chapter, because this, there is no greater law that can be shown than to lay down one's life for another. If you think about it in a natural sense, we have difficulty just treating people as we would like to be treated. And yet, God sent his son to die for the sins of the world as they were enemies to him at the time. There is no greater love. Verse, uh, verse 12. And when you're there, you can go ahead. This is my command, that ye love one another. This Jesus, he walked and showed man how to walk. He was an example. He said, this is my command, that ye love one another as, go ahead. As I have loved you. As I have loved you. Follow my example. Love as I have loved. Verse 13. Greater love have no man than this. There is no greater love than a man do what? That a man lay down his life for his friend. Then a man would lay down his life for his friend. And he's referring to them as friends because that is their potential. That is their potential. Because it's going to come a time when we're going to see him as he is. God. And we'll be God. So he says, but in order for that to happen, he had to lay down his life. So he said, greater law have no man than this. That a man lay down his life. For his friends. Let's go to Romans. Because as I stated, this was done. And we were so undeserving. We were unworthy. Wretched creatures. Disobedient children. This is Romans, the fifth chapter, and the sixth verse. What did God do for us? What did Christ do for us? When you're there, you go ahead. For when we were yet without strength. When we were yet without strength. In bondage to death. Go ahead. In due time Christ died for the ungodly. Died not for the righteous at that time. But for the ungodly. He said for when we were yet without strength. In due time Christ died for the ungodly. You have to think about this type of love. It's one thing when somebody would say. Man they gave up their life for their child. They gave up their life for their wife. But who would give up their life for an enemy? It's like you're giving up your life for a dog. That's what the love that was bestowed upon us was like. That's the only thing I can compare it to. You died for something that you, that's an enemy to you or that is lower than you. It said, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, enemies to him. Seth. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. For scarcely, for scarcely, 
every now and then. For a righteous man, will somebody give up their life? Go ahead. Yet preadventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. Sometimes on the battlefield, you see men giving up their life for their comrades. But what did this one do? But God commended his love toward us. Uh-huh. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You don't see that same one giving up his life for the one he's fighting against, his enemy. But that is just what the Father did. He gave his son and his son died while we were enemies to him. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, transgressors of his law, statutes, and commandments, he died for us. This is an extraordinary type of love. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. He died when we were yet sinners. And it wasn't just any type of death. It was a horrible death. And prior to that, he suffered humiliation. And while he walked and did the redemptive work of Christ, he suffered persecution. See, so when you, when you go against this love, or turn your back on him after the love he showed you, you are worthy of death. See, when I was making this lesson, I had it in my mind. I said, I said, okay, this is what the lesson is going to be about. It's going to be about the potential that we all have to become God. But one word kept coming in my mind. It kept coming in my mind, and that word was love. And it was shown to me that you must show these people that you have to understand the love that was shown for you to even have an opportunity to be saved. To have an opportunity to be God. Other than that, knowing that you had a potential won't mean anything. It'll just be that. Wasted potential. That's just what it'll be. Isaiah 53 and verse 3. Because we're going to find out the sacrifice that he made. And this is not just a man doing this for another man. This is a higher being, the highest being, the creator of the world. This is none other than Jesus who did this for us. This is Isaiah, the 53rd chapter in verse 3. When you there, go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. This one was despised and rejected of men as he walked in the flesh. Go ahead. A man of sorrow uh -huh. and acquainted with grief. He was acquainted with grief. He knew grief very well. When you're acquainted with something, you know. It says he is despised and rejected of men. This is the light of the world. And this is what man did. Again, so when you turn your back on God, and when you reject God, you are worthy of condemnation. You are worthy of death. He is despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. Go ahead. And we had as if we were our faces uh -huh. from him. We turned from him. Go ahead. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Then show him proper honor. Now he's the creator of the world. Again, this is my humble, my humble attempt to try to get you to understand and get you to see of what kind of love he showed. Most of us don't want to suffer any type of rejection, any type of being despised or any type of somebody turning their back on us. But this is what God did for us. This is what he did. He was despised and we esteem him not. Verse 4. Surely he had borne our grief uh -huh. and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. All the sins of the world were laid upon him. So that we wouldn't have to suffer the punishment, again, for the wage of sin is death. And yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, because who was he wounded for? But he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh -huh. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was wounded for our transgressions, for what we did. This is the law of God. He said, but we, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities or our sins. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh -huh. And with his stripes we are healed. But what he suffered, we can now be healed spiritually. This is love. No greater love than this right here. Verse 6. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Enemies to him. Adversaries to God. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Going after our own way. Go ahead. We have turned every one to his own way, uh -huh. and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And yet the Lord had mercy. The Lord had mercy. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, not us, but him, the iniquity or the sins of us all. 
Verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Uh huh. Then he opened not his mouth. Then didn't holler, didn't scream, didn't say this isn't right, but suffered so that we might be saved, so that we could have eternal life. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Go ahead. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, uh -huh. and as a sheep before our shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Because he is a sacrifice for all of men that would be saved. He said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is done, just as that sheep doesn't know, so he doesn't speak, the Lord knew what would happen, yet he still didn't open his mouth. Suffer so that we could have right to the tree of life. Verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judge, uh -huh. and who shall declare his generation? Uh -huh. For he was cut off out of the land of the living, uh -huh. for the transgression of my people was he stricken. He had no one to declare his generation. Because all those male boys were killed during his generation, when he came into the world. But it says, for he was cut out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Keep reading. And he made his grave with the wicked. Uh-huh. So he died a death of the wicked. But he wasn't wicked. He had done no sin. And he made his grave with the wicked. Go ahead. And with the rich in his death. Because he was buried in a rich man's tomb. Keep reading. Because he had done no violence. He had done no violence. That's why I say I see no fault in him. There was no fault in this one. Go ahead. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. No lying. He didn't have a, a tongue full of God. He was innocent. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He gave his only begotten son. Why? He had put him to grief. Uh-huh. But thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So that you might be saved. So that I might be saved. So that we can be what God is. Again, when you turn against him, when you reject him, you are worthy of condemnation. After you understand the love that he has bestowed. It said, yet he pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall, go ahead. He shall see his seed. Uh -huh. He shall prolong his days. Uh -huh. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So he's going to be resurrected. And he had to be resurrected in order for you to be resurrected. Christ the first priest. But let's go to Psalms the 69th division. Because again, he was innocent. He was innocent. And this is David, one. God said he had a heart like God. This is the... 69th division of Psalms in beginning at verse 1. When you're there, go ahead. Save me, O God, uh -huh. for the waters are coming to my soul. It says, Save me, O God, for the waters are coming into and unto my soul. Just like one that is drowning. This is the lamentation of one that is reproached. Again, that one David, he was suffering during his life. And he was in his life, and he was innocent. The same thing. With Jesus. Keep reading. So it says, Save me, O God, for the waters are coming in unto my soul. Go ahead. I seek in deep mire where there is no stand. I'm drowning, Lord. Go ahead. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. So it says, I'm sinking in deep mire and deep waters. I'm come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. Go ahead. I'm weary of my cry. Uh-huh. My throat is dry. Uh-huh. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. It says, no, my eyes fail while I wait for my God. So in this lamentation, this can be applied to David, but this is talking about that one. This is talking about that one that we read about in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, because he was innocent. You look at the sufferings of David that he had. The suffering of David when he was being chased and for, for nothing that he had done. The same so it was with Jesus. When he died for the sins of the world, for nothing that he had done. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. So he says, I am weary of my cry, and my throat is dry, and my eyes fell while I wait for my God. So you see, this is a foreshadowing of what took place on Calvary, on the, at, at the time that he was that he was king or crucified. Verse 4. They that hate me without a cause. I'm more than the hairs of mine head. Uh-huh. So it said they that hate me without a cause. They rejected him. I'm more than the hairs of mine head. Go ahead. They that would destroy me. 